Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, folks in Massachusetts are really sensitive about snow analogies right now. <laughs> We're at 77 inches, and uh, it's supposed to start snowing again this afternoon. So um, we've heard a lot today about how smaller banks are being smothered by unnecessary regulations, supposedly because of Dodd-Frank rules like the new mortgage rules that went into effect in the first quarter of 2014. Now, I've been looking for some hard data to support that claim. According to the latest report from the FDIC, the banking industry as a whole posted earnings of nearly $40 billion in the third quarter of 2014. That was a 7.3% increase relative to the third quarter of 2013. In other words, the banking industry did substantially better after the mortgage rules took effect in January of 2014. And here's the kicker. Community banks did even better than the industry as a whole. According to the FDIC, year-over-year -year community bank earnings were up nearly 11% compared with 7% for the industry as a whole. So, Mr. Blanton, if, as you claim, community banks were particularly hard hit by Dodd-Frank's new rules, why are they making more money since the rules went into effect and doing better than the big banks? Well, I don't really think there's a ne necessarily a direct correlation between the mortgage rule passing and the profits of a bank. Well, um, I, I thought that was exactly what your testimony was as I read it. And that is that the rules were tangling up the community banks so that the community banks couldn't do business, and yet their profitability seems to suggest they're doing better than ever after the regulations went into effect. Well, there again, I don't think that it's because of the regulations that the banks are doing better. I mean, it is tangling up our process to do mortgages. It's making it much more difficult. It's costing us quite a lot. Your, your statistics on the, the profits of our, of our industry are right. I mean, we've done very well. But if you go back and average over the last 10 years, it has been a very difficult process. And just now we're beginning to get some efficiencies and come back into the market and be successful. And we see these as constraints for us to where we, we're having a hard time continuing to, to have that momentum. Well, you know, I, I appreciate that, but like I said, the numbers show you're really doing pretty well after these regulations. We know that all of the big bank lobbyists love to come into our offices and talk about how community banks are being crushed and they need our help, but a lot of the times the legal changes that they're asking for aren't really about helping community banks. And here's an example. Mr. Blanton, in your testimony, the ABA's very first request in the name of community bank regulatory relief is a bill that would allow an insured depository institution of any size to satisfy the QM rule as long as they held the loan in portfolio. As you know, under the current rule, banks with under $2 billion in assets that issue fewer than 500 mortgages a year can already satisfy the QM rule for any loan that they hold on portfolio. The CFPB just proposed raising that threshold to 2,000 loans a year. That's going to cover the vast majority of community bank mortgages. So just give me a sense here, Mr. Blanton. If Congress passed this bill that the American Bankers Association wants, how many community bank mortgages would become eligible for QM that aren't currently eligible or under the CFPB rules would be eligible? And how does that stack up against the number of mortgages held by Wells Fargo, Citibank, JP Morgan, and the other giants that would become eligible under this change in the rules? Well, I think in the change in the rule that, that we're currently supporting, I would go back to the argument that if I'm holding that loan or they're holding that loan on their books, they're taking all the I, risk. I'm not asking you the question about whether or not you think it's a good rule. I'm asking you the question about the impact. I'm asking you how many mortgages currently are held or are being issued by community banks that would that are not don't have an exemption right now and that would be affected by this rule versus the number of mortgages that are held by Wells Fargo, JP Morgan, and other large financial Well, for community bank, we would certainly, if they raise that threshold, it would certainly exempt a whole lot of our mortgages that we're holding. You have a whole lot of mortgages outside the CFPB's proposed 2,000 mortgage threshold? No, ma'am, but we would add, we would be able to make those loans then and if they are And how many exempt. for the banking giants? Um, I, they're part of your organization. Maybe you could just get back to me yes, on that, and that would be helpful. Mm -hmm. You know, the financial performance of the community banks 
shows that Congress and the regulators, I think, have done a pretty good job of tailoring the rules to protect community banks. We should be very skeptical of regulatory relief bills that are promoted as helping small banks, but that are pushed by ABA lobbyists for the big banks. If we really want to help the community banks, let's start by getting rid of the $85 billion a year too big to fail subsidy that we give to the biggest banks year after year. Small banks aren't getting that. Yeah. Or let's start by holding big bank executives accountable for committing fraud, like we do with small bank executives for committing fraud. Those are the kinds of changes that would help level the playing field for our community banks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.